Hello, my name is Jason Kunst. I'm a technical marketing engineer for Identity Services Engine. This presentation is focused around easy and quick setup for guest BYOD and secure access. Today I will be bringing you through our new wireless setup tool in ICE 2.2 by showing you guest access management focusing on setting up of a sponsored guest flow in about five minutes. The wireless setup wizard allows you to quickly configure your wireless flows in a matter of minutes. The wireless setup flows in ICE 2.2 allow you to get ICE and the wireless controller up and running quickly with any necessary configuration along with basic customization and settings needed for your enterprise, 802.1x, guest and BYOD use cases. For guest access, we have the capability of creating the following flows. A hotspot, which is basically a simple portal you see at a coffee shop with an accept acceptable use policy. Self-registration, which allows users to create their own accounts. And sponsors, which basically gives you control in your own organization on who can create what accounts for your guests. Today we'll be going through the, using the tool to set up the sponsored guest flow. This allows a sponsor to create accounts through the portal and go ahead and then give those, those credentials to a user so they can log in to the, to the guest portal. Now let's get into using the tool. First we'll start by going into the ICE admin UI and going into the upper right here and selecting a wireless setup beta link. This will launch our setup for wireless tool. When you get into tool, it's going to ask you about the three different types of um, use cases that you can that it can do. Here we're going to go ahead and select guest access and the sponsored flow. Using the tool, we enter our WLC IP address, <clears throat> username, and password that are going to be used to configure. The, the controller via SSH CLI commands. We also enter a shared secret. This is to set up a radius communication between ICE and the wireless controller. We'll register with those settings and you can see we have a new WLC and we can commit those changes. Next we give the wireless controller a WLAN name that we want to create. I'll just make it my sponsor for ease of ease of use here. Next we select the the WLAN interface, the VLAN that the guests are going to use once they access and and provide correct credentials to the network. And we're going to redirect them to a success page at the at the end of their flow. We add that. Now we see our new WLAN called my sponsor. We'll go ahead and commit that. Now we give it our Active Directory information, our Active Directory domain, the username, and password so that we can go ahead and add AD to ICE and to utilize that for our, sponsored, our sponsor authentications when using the sponsor portal. And we'll join that domain. Now that we've successfully joined the domain, we have to we have to enter a sponsor group that was that's going to be used. I'm going to enter employees here. What's it, what what this is going to do is it's going to set up a mapping from my AD group of employees to my sponsor group's all accounts. That basically means that any employee can see all my accounts in this scenario, so that we can get a quick demo up and running for the customer as well. We go ahead and commit that. Now that we're done with that, we can go ahead and configure the customization for our portals. So here you see we, we have sponsor guest portal and sponsor portal. This sponsor portal is going to take the customization from the sponsored guest portal that we set up. The sponsored guest portal is the one that the guests actually log into. So we'll go ahead and click on the little pencil there to edit those. You can see under the customization options, we have a few different options available where we can go ahead and change the color. 
okay, of, of our fonts, our, our different text labels and such, you can go ahead and change the font, the font type as well. You can add in content that you might need. These are basic portal settings that we thought that would be useful for, for people right out of the box. Also, we can go ahead and see the different pages that we're going to use. So if you want to see how the success page is done, you can do that. You can change, change the, um, the text there as well. Uh, in the upper right here, you can see the different preview options, such as a desktop, a tablet view, or a, a mobile vertical view. We can go back to edit. And that's pretty much it to the portal customization. Basic options available to get a portal e and a flow up and running easily, quickly, and simple. Once you're done making any of your changes, such as uploading a logo or a banner or a background, you'll go ahead and commit those changes. Once those changes are committed, you can see that there's going to be a live portal test URL for the sponsored guest portal and also for the sponsor portal. So here you can go ahead and click on that test URL. You could have the user log into, log into the portal here and to give a simulation without setting up any, any real equipment. I will show it on real equipment, but if you didn't have uh, an access point at, the, at that time or maybe a real client, you could go ahead and use these test URLs. Same thing for the sponsor portal. And you'll notice that the sponsor portal takes on the same theme as your, as your guest portal. Here I can even try a login, right, because this is the actual sponsor portal. So I'll log in with an employee that's part, part of that employee group. Okay, I'll click sign on and accept that. Now that we're in the sponsor portal, we can go ahead and create an account. So I'm just going to give it some basic, simple information, such as a first name and last name, and that's about it. I can go ahead and at that time, once I put, once I give it that, once I give it that information, I can go ahead and create that account. Now that that account's created, we can use that later on to log in, log into our device. So that's it for the, the running of the tool and showing you the basics behind it. We'll go back to the tool and we'll also give it one more, one more thing, sponsored.demo.local, which is the easy URL that can be used um, when, when creating a sponsor portal so that you give this out to your sponsors and they can e have an easily uh, remembered FQDN. Now we click Next. We get a summary of all the different options that were done. We can go back and edit the sponsor portal, the sponsor guest portal. Um, you cannot change any of the settings. Once you go through a flow, there's no way to delete or edit your wireless controller or your WLAN name or your, your AD. It's, it's pretty, made, pretty much a one-way street when you're going through that. Now when we click Go Live, this is actually going to go out and uh, configure the wireless controller WLAN and enable that um, at the same time. So we're done using the tool. Here we'll go through, we'll show you the user going through. Um, <clears throat> next we'll show the user going through with a real client, uh, logging into the portal, and the different options that were configured on the wireless controller and on ICE as well. Now I'll head and go my, launch my remote client. I have an iPod here to set up. Go into settings and Wi-Fi, turn it on. I was already connected to the My Sponsor WLAN before. So it's going to automatically connect to that. I can go ahead and launch my Safari browser and try to get to a site to cause redirection. Try to get to Cisco.com. And I'm redirected. You can see my nice new portal. Here I can now go over to the sponsor portal and get, get those credentials that were set up before um, For that for that guest, okay, that we created before. See here, I have a user J Kunst already created, and the password is eight six three one. So I'll type in J Kunst.
and my password, 83631, and hit sign on. The user has been accepted. They go ahead and accept the AUP, and they have a successful connection to the guest network. Here I can go ahead and try to get to Cisco.com again and see that I now have internet access. We'll go back over to ICE and close that sponsor portal now that we're done with it. And we can look at our, our, um, our first we can look at our wireless controllers. Uh, notice that the, the WLAN was created with um, profile name my sponsor, the WLAN name. Um, it's set up for Mac auth bypass, Mac, Mac filtering as well. We get the AAA servers. You can see our ICE IP address is configured in there for both authentication and accounting. And under advanced, we have allow AAA override, which allows us to send down VLANs and ACLs and UR re redirections, um, as well as the NAC state being radius NAC, which is um, just basically giving compliance um, for change of authorization. And that's, that's, uh, that's it for the WLAN. Now we'll go over to security. Under AAA radius authentication, you can see the ICE server there. And uh, accounting as well. Next, we look under access control list and our redirection, uh, your, our redirection, your um, ACL is also set up. Uh, under that, you can see that it's going to basically redirect on any site, okay, um, except for the ICE IP address. Now we can go back to ICE and we can see, um, you know, what took place with the users after they logged in. So we'll go under up under operation radius live logs. And you can see when I first came in, I get Mac uh, I came in for, with with Mac, uh, wireless Mab, okay. Okay. Mac OS bypass, I get a Mac address. And what it says is basically it's unknown, so we'll go ahead and send it to, to that sponsored guest portal that we set up. Um, the user will go ahead and log in, and a change of authorization will take place. And the user, Jay Kunz, logged in. You can see that happening. Uh, we did get some, after we logged in, we get some more information about the, about it as well. Um, we, we got we were redirected um, first when we logged in. Now we're getting guest access policy, which is sending down um, access permit, and we we know we know this um, we know this device now. That's it um, for the radius live logs. Now what we can do is we can go up to work centers guest access and look at the different information that was set up. Okay, first we can look at the external identity sources. You see that Active Directory was set up with that demo.local join point. And we can go under groups and see that that employee group that we configured was, was brought in as well. Next, we go under work centers, guest access. We, look at, we can look at network devices. You see the wireless controller was configured. And we set it up for radius with that shared secret that we put in. Next, the work centers, guest access, portal, portals and components. You can see a sponsored guest portal was made here, okay? And it is used in an authorization policy. If you want to go, go in and tweak some more of the settings or do further customization, you can do that there as well. Um, a guest type was set up. Okay, with the wireless setup beta, we used a from first in login guest type, so we don't care about locations or access times or anything like that. It's basically a simple um, guest type that's set up um, to get you up and running quickly. Next, we'll get into sponsor groups and see that wireless setup gave us a sponsor group that has employees mapped. So this gives the employees access to create accounts and view all accounts. And finally, under sponsor portals, we created our own sponsor portal. There's nothing really to the sponsor portal here besides that we're using that sponsor 
uh, we're using that portal setting of sponsor.demo.local with that easy quick access okay so for example we can now go to sponsor.demo.local and we get that easy fqdn name the easy url that we can log into there we can now look at our policy elements for authorization profiles And you notice that we have an authorization profile set up uh, with wireless setup. And what this, would, what this is used for is when the user comes in, the device, we, we don't know the user yet. We just know the device, the Mac, the Mac auth bypass. So you can see that we're redirecting to that portal that we set up um, with that ACL web auth redirect. And finally, our authorization policy. The, the tool created uh, two of these policies here. Basically, it says if uh, we're wireless MAB and you're coming in on that My Sponsor SSID, we're going to redirect you to the sponsored guest portal. After the user logs into that portal, a change of authorization takes place, which we showed you in the live logs, and they then get access with the with permit with a permit access of for guests. And that's it to it. Uh, we set up a portal in a matter of about five minutes, and then I went through all the settings and changes and showed you a real client connecting. Uh, that's it to the tool. Get, get quick, simple, easy setup of wireless guests in a matter of minutes. Thank you very much.